introduce Sean Guan uh, from the math department, uh, who will be giving today's Dean Seminar. Sean uh, uh, joined the faculty here at IUSB in 2004, and was fairly recently in 2016 promoted to full professor, as well deserved. Yeah. Um, and uh, he got his doctorate at the University of Toledo and uh, postdoc at uh, Yale University. Um, and uh, he, his interests are in bioinformatics and statistics. And uh, I was really intrigued in one, uh, the title of one of your papers, uh, which uh, uh, basically, oh, where is this one? Uh, empirical likelihood methods for non-ignorable missing data problems. I have a lot of non-ignorable <laughs> missing data problems. <laughs> yeah, that's a Perhaps I should sit down and talk to you yeah. about it. But today, uh, John's going to talk to us about uh, the Bernstein polynomial model, redefining uh, non-parametric uh, statistics and non-parametric models. So thanks, John. Right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for coming, uh, and thank you for giving me, me this uh, opportunity to share my work with you. And today I'm going to talk my uh, recent research uh, about using polynomial, uh, Bernstein polynomial to, uh, as a non-parametric model to solve non-parametric problems in statistics. Uh, I'll just escape this uh, long abstract. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, in real world problem, it's uh, actually people, uh, traditionally people use uh, uh, parametric models to solve statistic problem. Uh, like normal distribution is the commonly used model. Right? Uh, but some other uh, situation, people use uh, like uh, exponential, right? Uh, uh, log normal uh, in economics and other models are very common, right? But uh, uh, parametric model is subject to a uh, model misspecification, and right? that's, uh, that's the, the major problem. Uh, usually the, 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 the commonly used the parametric model only contains uh, uh, one or two or three or a few parameters. Right, that's a hard to fit a real date. Uh, so if nowadays uh, people have uh, the so-called uh, the big data, right? But big data are very uh, noisy. Right, that means uh, uh, very much contaminated. Right? That's uh, it's even more difficult to to use a parametric model to fit uh, the real data in. Uh, big data problem. Right? So, uh, but actually, uh, all models are just an approximate model. That's no model is exact. Right? Like a normal distribution is so popular, but it's still an uh, approximate model. Not so no one can guarantee it is exact model. Uh, so the, this is uh, the very famous. Uh, Comments that all models are wrong in statistics. I, I don't know whether it is true in other area, but uh, in statistics, it's it's really true, right? Um, but uh, just uh, because some model is uh, some models are are useful, so people choose uh, those useful models. Uh, so parametric model, the big big problem of parametric model is uh, the robustness. It is not robust, right? Uh, once uh, the the model uh, is a little bit different from the true uh, situation, then the, the statistical results and inference may quite quite bad. Uh, maybe it's totally wrong. Right? So that's the big problem of parametric model, and therefore uh, people. Uh, prefer a uh, non-parametric model right, to solve statistical problems. Uh, but traditionally, uh, people are talking about a non-parametric model. So when we estimate uh, uh, the, the 
population distribution function, right? So people just uh, specify nothing for this uh, distribution. It just simply say we have uh, a, a function which is uh, uh, non-decreasing, right, continuous, right? But if uh, the population is continuous, then we may just say this function is continuous function, maybe differentiable, so that the deriv derivative is uh, the density function is still unknown. But here we, we specify nothing, almost nothing, right? Just uh, right, this uh, only the, the set of conditions must be satisfied uh, by uh, the so-called cumulative distribution function. Uh, when estimating probability density function, right, they, they just simply say the model is just a, a non-negative non uh, function, right, which uh, integrate to one, right, that's it, right, that's, right, of course, there is not, this is, uh, uh, the, the conditions must be satisfied by any density function, right, so this is not a model, right, because when we talk about model, there should be something specified, not, not, not just uh, anything, right? So, uh, in most uh, semi-parametric model, right, the, maybe uh, the, the, the CDF and the PDF are involved, and then they also assume just uh, nothing, almost nothing, except this uh, set of conditions. So that's uh, the so-called uh, semi-parametric model, right? Of, of course, the parametric part uh, in semi-parametric model is just uh, like a, a normal or maybe just a few uh, parameters. Um, so that's uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, traditional uh, non-parametric models. Uh, so I, I included in quotes, let's see, this is actually not actual, uh, actual model, right? This is just nothing, right? Um, uh, again, right, that's, uh, all models are wrong, right, but some are useful, and that means some are not useful. Right? <laughs> so those models are not so useful, right? Uh, they are not working model because uh, in the next slide I will show you, right, actually people, when people just uh, pretend uh, using this kind of uh, so-called non-parametric model, they, they are still using uh, a different model to solve the problem. Uh, so if uh, you agree with this, right, then this, uh, th those kind of uh, model is not a model, right, because they are not wrong, right? They are, they're exactly correct, <laughs> nothing wrong. So <laughs> they are not a model, right? But just because they, are, uh, they, they specify nothing, so this, they cannot be called model, right? Um, but uh, actually, people already know, right, uh, for, for the density function, right, for any fixed x, right, if uh, the density function is positive, then the information contained in the sample, right, because sample is just a, a few numbers. Right. Uh, the information contained in the, the, the sample for this value, f of x, which is positive, is zero. But people, um, if you, you're, you're still familiar with uh, the, the classical statistics, right? Usually, uh, the, the variance of an estimator is the reciprocal of the information. Right? So if uh, information is zero, that means that the variance of the estimation will be just uh, infinity. Right? That's, that means you, you cannot just simply give a meaningful estimate of any quantity, right, like this, right? If the density, right, if you, you just try to estimate the density for every, uh, point, that's, that means the, the, the estimate may subject very large variation, right? So that's, that means this is not a, a useful uh, model. So even, right, you, you specify some more conditions like uh, uh, existence of uh, derivatives, that's, that's uh, won't help, right? It's still, uh, uh, the, the information is still zero. So in this sense, this kind of model is, uh, is not useful, it's not model. Um, but actually, right, people solving non-parametric statistics not using that model, right? That's a specified nothing, but uh, actually they are using a, a approximate model, right? Like, so people are all know, uh, when we estimate uh, a, a unknown probability distribution function, 
then we use, usually use the empirical distribution. But empirical distribution is a step function. Actually, this is a, a, a distribution of a discrete dis, uh, distribution. Uh, so that's uh, uh, only have uh, positive probability at uh, observe the value this uh, x i's. Uh, so that's uh, the commonly used the numpy metric estimate, right? But this estimate uh, using the so-called uh, approx uh, the, the discrete model, right? Which is a approximate model, right? But just uh, uh, we use uh, a discrete Redmer uh, distribution to approximate a continuous distribution, uh, assume uh, possible values uh, at uh, observe the sample values and with the probability pi, which is unknown. Then we have a, a parametric model. Although the number of uh, parameters uh, depends on the sample size n, because here uh, we have actually n minus one unknown parameters. All those p's should sum to one, and therefore there are uh, n minus one unknown parameters. Uh, so you can just uh, simply uh, maximize the likelihood of this uh, model, and then you obtain this, right? This, uh, the maximizer of this uh, likelihood function uh, is that uh, all PIs equals one N. Right? And therefore, so you replace the unknown parameter PI by uh, one N, that's just uh, the empirical distribution. Right? So but actually here, right? People solving non parametric uh, problem it's actually using a, an approximate model, right? not just uh, uh, assuming nothing, uh, just uh, you have a, de a non-decreasing function, but it's actually using a parametric model. But this, uh, of course, this uh, parametric model is different from the, the classical parametric model, right? Uh, in classical parametric model, the number of parameters are fixed, right? It's one or two or three. But this, in this case, the number of uh, parameters uh, usually uh, increase, uh, may approach infinity when sample size uh, approach infinity. So that's the difference of non-parametric model and the, uh, the, 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 the classical parametric model. Uh, empirical likelihood method is, uh, is a, a pretty new method. It's very powerful, but actually, uh, that this method uses the same model, right? Also use uh, this uh, uh, discrete approximation as uh, the working model. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, right, you cannot use this to estimate the density. Right? Density is a, a usually is a, is a smooth curve, but this uh, empirical distribution is a step function. It's not differentiable. You cannot just simply uh, differentiate this uh, Fn to obtain density, right? But uh, you have to smooth the, 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 uh, this distribution to obtain density function. Uh, so this uh, uh, picture shows that uh, generally, right, uh, if you have a, a smooth function, of course, even uh, the, uh, any uh, cumulative distribution function, which may be discontinuous, right? but you can always find a, a step function to approximate a, a smooth curve. Um, but here, right, because uh, I, that just means you use a, a, dis, a discrete distribution to approximate this, uh, uh, this uh, continuous distribution. And then in this case, you have to assume uh, this uh, d squared distribution has possible values at uh, observe the sample values. If your sample size is small, right, say it's, here is just a few uh, sample values, then you cannot get a, a very good uh, acceptable uh, step function approximation. Right? So you have to have many observed values so that there are many steps, and then you may have a, a very good step function approximation, right? But here, if, if yes? Can I ask a clarification question? Um, so the x here are the different, so x1 to x5, are they, are they different values of one single variable, or are, are they different? Yeah, that's a here, uh, I just assume these are the, 
uh, the sample values of the values of a random variable. Of one variable. Yeah, one variable. Yeah. Then this uh, this smooth curve is the unknown distribution function. Right. That's uh, uh, our target. We we want to estimate this uh, unknown curve, but uh, but although it is unknown, but there is a, a curve. But uh, for any uh, distribution function, then you, you can find a step function approximation, right? But, yes? Okay, the distance between the, uh, the red dashed lines of the step function and that smooth unknown uh, function would be the estimation errors, right? Uh, no, this, uh, this is uh, the, right, these are the steps of the, 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 the step function. Right? right. Yeah, but, uh, Uh, here, I think uh, I, 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 I might know what you're talking about. You may refer to uh, the regressions, right? But here, these are, these are not the observed points. Right? In regression, you have uh, the observed point. You, you, you try to fit the, the observed points with uh, either curve or straight line. But here, these are uh, uh, the, the unknown uh, probability distribution function, okay. right, but uh, here this is uh, for any uh, smooth curve, uh, we can find a step function approximation. Right? Uh, but if you have uh, more observed values, you may have uh, more steps, then you may get, uh, yeah, in, in that case, you may have a smaller error. Right? So the more yeah. observations that we have, the smaller that we can manipulate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 but uh, it's uh, uh, because in real world problem, you, you only have a fixed number of observations. The sample size is fixed, so you, you, you have nothing to do with that. You, you can just uh, go with, uh, say, if you just have uh, five numbers in a sample, then you, you may have just uh, use a, a, a step function like this to approximate this. Right? That's a, there is no way you can improve it. Right? Uh, so that's right, that's it. But uh, of course, here uh, the this is a, a, par, par, a parametric model, right? See, there's a p1, p2, p3 determines the step function, and then this uh, the, the the jump the the discontinuities, this x are given. That's a sample value. So you can treat this piece as a, a unknown parameter. Then you use a, a maximum likelihood method to maximize the likelihood, and then you find these PIs, then, but actually we, we find that uh, all equal to one nth, uh, that's uh, uh, the, the, the maximum likelihood estimator. Right? But uh, right, this uh, method only works for large sample, but uh, for small sample, there is no way you can get a, a satisfactory <coughs> uh, estimate. Um, so, Useful model must be uh, approximate parametric model. But here, this uh, parametric is uh, different from uh, the, the, the traditional ones. And so usually, right, it's, it has to be finite dimensional. Right? For that step function, we only have uh, just a few steps. So that's a finite, right? That's uh, only determined by uh, just a few numbers. But uh, there are other better approximate model, right? Like uh, uh, the polynomials. Polynomials are determined by the coefficients of the polynomial function, right? and then that's a still right, finite dimensional. So, but uh, polynomial is a smooth curve, so it's better than the step function. So that's why uh, we can right, just uh, directly use that as an approximate model, right? But uh, so step function is a uh, is actually approximation, right? But uh, it's not good prop approximation. Uh, but this uh, step function is uh, a multiple a uh, multinomial distribution model. So, but this approximation must be a probability model, 
Otherwise, uh, because here we are modeling uh, probability distribution. So that's uh, actually just a discrete distribution. It's a, uh, a number of uh, parameters, right, could increase as the sample size increase. Uh, but uh, in order to estimate the density, right, so traditionally people have to use a kernel to smooth that uh, step function then to obtain a, a, a derivative or a density. Right? So that's uh, the, the, the best we can do right, before uh, uh, this uh, uh, new model. And kernel density right, is uh, uh, proposed uh, first uh, in uh, 50s. Right? And this is uh, the, the formula right? uh, we can calculate the uh, kernel density. And actually, right, this is uh, the, the, the convolution of the discrete density function that's a uh, correspond to the, the empirical distribution function and a, a scaled kernel. So this is still a, a, a convolution. Uh, but this uh, k is, can be Treat it as a density function if you, you choose k as a non negative, uh, uh, but uh, with integral equal to 1, then this is a, a density function. But fn is a discrete density, so, uh, but this, if n is very large, this uh, discrete density is supposed to be uh, a good estimator of the, 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 the density, but uh, it is a still a step function. Or it is just uh, the, the, uh, the histogram, right? So you have to smooth it by using this kernel smoothing. You're actually estimating the, the convolution of the Arnold density f and this uh, k sub h. So you are not estimating the true Arnold f. So, uh, but of course, if uh, the sample size is very large, right? uh, if k and uh, this uh, with, uh, the, the, the bandwidth h is very small, then you still get a, a, a very close estimate to the Arnold density f. But uh, uh, the, 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 the performance depends on uh, the, the, the choice of the bandwidth h. Uh, that's uh, not so uh, uh, easy to, to, to select a, a good optimal uh, bandwidth h. So this is uh, the, the, the traditional uh, non-parametric density estimation. Right. But this is a, only a smooth method, but it's not a maximum likelihood method. Right. But uh, although we estimate uh, the capital F using empirical distribution, that's a, a maximum likelihood estimate. But uh, this density is just simply uh, a smoothing of uh, that <coughs> distribution, not directly uh, a maximum likelihood estimate. So uh, here I show you the uh, the, distri uh, the the empirical distribution. Right, this uh, red curve is uh, the the Arno, uh, CDF, and this uh, blue blue lines shows that the empirical distribution. But here, uh, we have a pretty large sample size, 70, right? but this is still not so good. But uh, usually, the performance of uh, the distribution function, uh, empirical distribution function, perform much better than the density. Right? With the same sample size, the kernel density usually is, uh, requires even larger sample size. Right uh, here, uh, this is uh, the uh, kernel density. Uh, see, this uh, is not, not not even close, but this is actually the typical image you can get if you try kernel density estimates. No matter how you you select the bandwidth, you always uh, get something like, like this if the the, the the sampling error is large. Right? It, it always uh, go with uh, the, the the sampling. Right, sometimes getting uh, overfitted, right? 
Um, but this is a, a simulated data. I, I simulated a seven uh, pseudo random number uh, from uh, standard normal distribution and then uh, get this uh, picture. And this uh, uh, image, I can show you uh, how kernel density right, rely on the, the bandwidth selection. Uh, with a sample size 100, right, that's a, it's already a large sample. Uh, uh, the, 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 the sample is, uh, is generated from standard normal distribution. Right, that's uh, the true density, uh, the, the red curve. And the blue line shows the kernel density. Uh, and, but here, this uh, uh, picture shows the bandwidth equals 0 0.05, and this is uh, not nothing like a density function. Right? Nothing uh, looks like a, a normal distribution. But if we, we change this, see, we, we change this uh, to a little bit larger value, and then we get uh, uh, this is still messing, right? but uh, it's. Uh, a little bit better, right. and then we, we get this uh, even larger, right, 0 0.3. So it's getting closer to a normal curve, but still not, not good. Right. Uh, but because we, we know the true density, right. but of course, in real world, you, you don't know the true density. Right. Maybe you, when you, you see this curve, maybe uh, that's good, that's a, a density function, right? But, uh, uh, when, once you realize the true density, right, it's, uh, it's quite different. It's not so good. Um, but uh, uh, the, the computer package uh, usually have uh, some method to select the optimal bandwidth. Right? This is uh, one of the uh, commonly used methods to select <coughs> uh, optimal bandwidth. It uh, gives us uh, h equals 0 0.3352. Then that's this is just a kind of a, a optimal curve we can get using kernel density. Well, although the, the sample size is uh, very large, but uh, it's still uh, uh, not uh, so good. Uh, another commonly used method for selecting uh, optimal bandwidth uh, give a similar results, uh, of course, similar curve. So this uh, uh, the, the kernel density. Later, I will show you uh, using my method. Then the comparison is uh, clear, right? The, the new method will be uh, very much better. So, empirical distribution using the, the, the discrete approximate model, but a uh, better model, continuous, right? not, not a step function, exists. So that's the so-called uh, Bernstein polynomial. Uh, but a Bernstein polynomial uh, initially is defined on this interval zero to one. Right? But of course, when you have a, a arbitrary distribution, it's a support uh, uh, even larger different interval, then you can do some kind of a transformation to convert the data value to interval from zero to one. Right? That's no problem. So, and then, but the here, uh, in, in the following, I will just assume uh, the support. Uh, the, the, the possible values are just uh, between zero and one. Right? So that uh, we can just uh, have a, a, a simpler expression for the Bernstein polynomial. Right, that's uh, uh, the Bernstein polynomial uh, with this uh, uh, components is the, actually, this is the binomial distribution. Uh, but with uh, x as the, the probability. And the coefficient here is determined by the, the, the function at, at uh, uh, i over m. Right? This uh, uh, polynomial has a degree m, right? because here is uh, uh, the, each component, the degree is just m. So it's a still a uh, polynomial. And that's uh, the, the the classical Bernstein polynomial. But 
this, uh, this form of a Bernstein polynomial has uh, the best uh, degree of approximation is only 1 over m. m is the degree of freedom. So it cannot be improved. Uh, no matter this uh, function has uh, uh, all derivatives, uh, even uh, that's, you cannot improve this uh, degree of uh, 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 approximation. Uh, that's, that's, that's it, right? Uh, but uh, this uh, already provides a very good approximation. Uh, but in statistics, people already use this uh, uh, a polynomial to, uh, to uh, smooth uh, the, the empirical distribution. But they just simply right, try to uh, estimate this function. Right? Because f is unknown, of course, uh, you don't know this value, but uh, uh, we can use the, the, the kind of uh, <coughs> numerical derivative uh, to estimate this, right? Because uh, little f is a derivative of capital F, but here this is a step function. We, we can just uh, still try to estimate the derivative using this, right? But of course, you can imagine that's not good. Right? But this is a method to smooth. Uh, the, the, the empirical distribution, right, that's uh, uh, 1975, people already do this, but this is still smoothing method, not, not uh, maximum livelihood method, not model based. But why don't we just uh, treat this as an unknown parameter? Like uh, those p's as the, the step function approximation, we, we use a, uh, the maximum likelihood estimate, right? So that's uh, you, uh, initially what I thought. So I tried, uh, I just uh, model this uh, unknown density function as a parameter, a parametric model. So because those are <coughs> coefficients are unknown, right? we treat them as unknown parameter. Then we use we can use a uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimate, but uh, here uh, I I change this right just uh, originally there is a b right but I change it to beta so that this is a, a beta distribution density so I just simply multiply b by m plus one so this happened to be a beta distribution density and then this piece as uh, the the uh, the, the mixing proportion. So they are uh, non-negative, right? and the total is one, so this sum is still a density function. Now we, we have a density, uh, probability density, so it is a, a probability model. Uh, but uh, this piece, uh, on no parameters, uh, but uh, Actually, there is a, a mathematical results uh, proved in 1963. Shows that there is a other choice of this uh, coefficients, not just uh, simply this, this thing. There are other, uh, maybe the, those, but uh, people don't know how to, to calculate them, but uh, people already proved that there exists those kind of uh, uh, coefficients, PIs. It's non-negative, and it has a, a much better degrees of uh, uh, approximation. Right? If uh, the the uh, the function has uh, like uh, uh, two times k derivative, then this uh, is no longer one over m. Right? If you have uh, say uh, uh, like a false derivative then this is one over m squared, not, not one over m. Right? If you have a, like a 100 derivative exists, then this will be one over m to the fifties. Right? So that's much better approximation. Of course, uh, people don't know how to calculate these PIs using the, the, the function f. But of course, here in statistics, we don't worry about that. We, 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 we actually don't know f of x, right? But we just treat this as an unknown parameter, right? 
And then I, I call this uh, the, the maximum uh, approximate uh, Bernstein life estimator. Uh, so then we can write life wood with the constraints. Then we maximize the life wood. Then we can obtain the, uh, the, the maximizer. And then we can add, replace the PM uh, by the maximizer. And then we find the density estimate. Um, but uh, of course, this uh, M is also a parameter. And this M usually right, uh, depends on the sample size. Right? If the sample size is larger, the M could be larger. So you can increase the number of parameters. Uh, but uh, I propose uh, the, the a change point method to choose uh, optimum M. Uh, actually, this method for choosing a model is, is also new in, in statistics. Nobody have ever been using this kind of method to choose an a optimal model in statistics. Um, so that's uh, just the, uh, the method. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, this is a, a mixture model, a right? mixture of a beta distribution. So a uh, mixture model is usually not regular model. So you cannot just uh, simply use a new method to, to search for the maximizer. So, but you can, for, as a mixture model, you can use EM algorithm. Although EM algorithm is a slow, but it's guaranteed you can search, uh, you, you, you can obtain the, the, the maximum uh, likelihood estimate. Um, but uh, in this uh, simple case, the EM algorithm is simple. It's just a kind of a uh, fixed point iteration. Right? You just uh, get uh, some initial value, <coughs> P0, I plug in, and then you, you calculate the second one, and then get uh, it many time, right? but of course this uh, converge is uh, slow, so you, have, you may have to run it uh, like a uh, hundred or maybe thousand times, then you get a uh, converge. Unlike a new, Newton method, a Newton method usually uh, like a 10 times or maybe just a few times, you get converge, but this is a uh, EM algorithm is usually slow. Uh, so here I, I want to show you how to choose the, the, the optimal degree M. So I calculate uh, the, the maximum likelihood estimate uh, for different M degree. I see, uh, see I start from uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But I will just skip some values. See this uh, picture shows M equals 5. That's a, uh, we use a degree 5 polynomial. And then you see this are uh, the true, the green line is uh, the true density, but this is estimated, is clearly not good, right? But uh, the likelihood is here, right? The likelihood function is, uh, when we increase this uh, to 10, but I skip, right? I actually, I will calculate five, six, seven, nine, ten. So, but I skip some of this uh, curve, right? This, when I'm increased to ten, then this is getting closer to the true density. Right. Um, but uh, I change it even bigger, then we get uh, even uh, closer. But you look at the the, the likelihood function, right? Five and ten is a big jump. So that's because we use the maximum likelihood method. And then change to 15, that's another big jump. And then when we increase it to 20, right, you see uh, it's still increase, but it's increase is not so, so large. Right? But uh, we get a, a better, much better estimate. But uh, because uh, the uh, the lower degree model is always a, a special model of a higher degree. So when you increase M, likelihood will always increase. Like uh, when you, you, you do regression, you add some term, then you always get a likelihood increase. 
but even you, you add irrelevant terms in the regression, you, you always get increasing likelihood. This is the same situation here. So see, when I change, uh, increase to 25, then it's still increasing, but uh, the increase is so small. Right? So maybe that's uh, just caused by sampling error. Right? And then, see, this uh, still keep increasing, but uh, the curve, the estimated curve is getting worse. Right? And then, keep increasing, see? The curve getting worse and worse. So I realize there is a change point somewhere that should be our optimal degree, right? But actually, that's the, the change point of uh, the the likelihood ratio. And uh, then likelihood ratio uh, as a non-negative red variable, and then I use a change point method to find that uh, a change point, then determine the maximum. At the, the optimal degree, and that's the way I choose optimal uh, model degree. And these are the, the, the change point methods applied here, and then we can exactly determine uh, the, the uh, most of the time it's a unique M uh, by maximizing this uh, likelihood ratio quantity, and also find a lower bound for the, 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 the degree, right? So once we determine a lower bound for M, then we just start from this, say this is a three, and that is that's from three, five, uh, four, five, six, seven, and, and so on. And, but then we choose a very large upper limits, then find the change point, then we determine the, uh, the optimal degree. And this is the picture you can see this is a, a typical comparison between uh, the, the, the commonly used method. And uh, my method is this uh, Bernstein, right? That's the, uh, the black line. And this uh, dotted uh, blue line is the kernel method. Parametric method is uh, the light blue. And uh, red curve is the true value. And uh, we also have uh, the, 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 uh, the histogram. So, of course, the parametric method is the best right? because here we generate the sample from normal distribution and then we use a normal parametric model to estimate this because that's just estimate mean and the, and the variance. Then, so usually, right, with this uh, large sample size, right, you, you, you expect to get very good estimate right, using parametric method. Right? That's no problem. But, uh, of course, in real world problem, we assume uh, just non-parametric model. And then, so this is the way, right? but uh, actually in simulation where we see this, uh, um, uh, this Bernstein method is even closer to the, to the, the, the parametric method, right? but uh, it's much better than the kernel method. Right? But kernel method is usually, right, even you use a, a, a optimal bandwidth, uh, kernel method is usually overfitting. Right? It's, you see, the histogram shows this pattern, right? That's a, it's, that's the cost by the sampling error. But the uh, kernel method is usually just fitting the, the sample error. Right? So it's overfitting, that's uh, the problem. Right? But uh, using my method, right, I get, uh, uh, usually get a very good, much better estimate. Uh, these are some, uh, uh, large sample properties. Uh, under some conditions, we show that this uh, uh, a weighted, this is a kind of a chi-square dis, uh, distance, uh, or weighted uh, uh, mean square, uh, uh, integrated mean square error. Uh, this rate can be one uh, log n over n. Uh, the best, the, the best rate can obtain uh, by a parametric method is one over n. Right? That's uh, the best convergence rate we can obtain. Right? Uh, nothing better, but this is uh, all, this is usually called the almost uh, parametric rate right? because this log n is 
uh, increased slowly, right, very slow. So it, it is uh, uh, much better than the, the kernel density. Right? But if uh, uh, the, the denominator, the density is, uh, is bounded, of course, this is the uh, mean integrated standard error. Right? This, uh, of course, this is still the same rate. Right? That's uh, right, the theoretical result. So this is a nearly parametric. Um, uh, the, the method applied to some uh, real date set. Uh, from this, you can see uh, this uh, based on real date, this is a likelihood. Uh, when we increase the degree M, then the, the likelihood keep increasing, increasing. Right? But you see that the slope is very large. But uh, at certain point, the slope change to uh, smaller. So there must be a, a, a change point. Um, but this is the likelihood ratio. The likelihood ratio reach the, uh, the peak point, that's the change point. But that's uh, the same point. And now I just use that M94, and then fit this model, and then we got this. But you see, uh, there are several methods, kernel method, uh, this uh, blue line, the, the black line is my method, and um, mixture normal distribution model is the, 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 the green line, and they are all quite different, right? not, not close. Even here we have a very large sample size. And the, this model is not just uh, useful for uh, the, the raw data, but uh, for some uh, other data like uh, group data. In many statistical problems, you only have a group data, or maybe sometimes uh, you, you run off the observation too much, then you may have a kind of a, a group data or uh, a contaminated data. Then this uh, model works that, right, but it's much better than the kernel method. This kernel method is, uh, is cannot do anything about this uh, I cannot model it exactly, right? but here we still have a, a parametric model right? uh, for group data. This is like a, you, you have a histogram, then you want to find the, the, the density curve. Right? But uh, you have to, uh, if uh, you can find a maximum likelihood method to draw the density curve, that will be preferred. Right? This, uh, this is the way I escape this. Uh, another. Application is, right, if uh, the, uh, the, the, the observation is contaminated, right, like uh, uh, the, the real data is X, but it, it is uh, contaminated by a random error, epsilon. Right? <coughs> so you actually observe Y. Right? But you, you want to estimate uh, the density of X, not this sum. So this is called the density deconvolution because you can, uh, the, the, the density of Y is the convolution of uh, uh, density of X and uh, the error density. So that's a convolution. But uh, uh, in a simple case, if you know the density, uh, the, the error density, say like a normal distribution or something, so you know this. But here, you, because you only observe the sum, not the, 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 the X and the epsilon separately. So you cannot separate them, right? but you can estimate uh, the density of Y, right? That's, a, uh, that's a, uh, using, uh, traditionally using kernel density, but uh, uh, that's not good. Right? But uh, my method works for this case. Right? We can achieve much better uh, Convergence rate. Uh, so traditionally, people use a kernel estimate to deconvert uh, root uh, this uh, density. Uh, the characteristic functions are just a Fourier uh, transform of the density function. Right? So after this uh, transform, then the characteristic function of y equals the product of uh, characteristic functions of x and the epsilon. Right? But uh, this can be estimated because you observe y. And this is known because you know the error density. So 
of course, you can just uh, simply divide both sides by this term. You, you solve for this. This is a, a, the characteristic function of x. And then you have to apply the inverse Fourier transform to, right, to get the density of x. But that's uh, uh, even, get e even worse. So although it works, uh, you, you can get some uh, estimate, but uh, the estimate is just not so good just because the optimal rate of convergence is only uh, log n to a negative power. So, but log n is a uh, is very slow increasing function, but uh, this, is, this is so bad. Right? Uh, so that's uh, uh, the, the, the ma major problem of this uh, kernel deconvolution, uh, just because this is rate is so slow uh, but uh, using my model, it's just uh, simply uh, another mixture model, right? With this, uh, uh, this uh, components are already known, but of course M is unknown. You can use change point method to find the uh, optimal M, and this PIS is still uh, the unknown parameter. Then you use a uh, maximum likelihood to estimate this PIS. Then you you can. Get right once you get the PI, then you can estimate the density. That's that's it, right? So you don't need any uh, Fourier uh, transform. And I obtain a convergence rate like this. Of course, here you, you have to assume the, 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 the density function has a higher order, uh, a higher derivative, right? Say if a, uh, the uh, more than five fifth der derivative exists, then k is, uh, I think that's a, a, that's a two k's, right, uh, derivative. And then if k is bigger than five, then you have a term n to the negative power. It's much faster than just a simply log n to a negative power. So that's, uh, that's why I call it a fast uh, deconvolution. Uh, I'll just uh, maybe just show you a few pictures to finish. Right. So this uh, comparison, right, uh, x is uh, normal and, and error is normal. Then this uh, the curve I showed this picture. Right. The parametric method uh, has the smallest the error. Right, that's a black curve. Um, the, my method right, has a, a error, it's just a, a little bit bigger than parametric. Right. And then uh, this, uh, the kernel method right, is really bad. Right. Um, but this uh, blue curve is uh, the density estimate using the pure data, not contaminated. Right, because here we're doing simulation, we generate the real x, then this uh, blue curve is the kernel density based on that, uh, that's a real x, not contaminated. But it's, this method is still better than that, that kernel method. And this is, a, I think I just finished this right here. Uh, this other pictures are almost the same thing. Right? Uh, this shows uh, point-wise uh, the, the comparison. Uh, I'll just uh, show. Um, this uh, the kernel method, my method, the error is much better. Uh, this also shows the same graph. Another real data analysis. Uh, this uh, also uh, the same way. We, we use change point for the optimal degree. And then then for this, uh, this is uh, the, 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 the blood pressure uh, data. Right? Blood pressure uh, readings are subject to very big uh, error. Right? So this is contaminated, right? but uh, here we try to deconvolute the true density. Right? This is uh, a kernel method, uh, uh, the, the kernel method, and uh, my method. Uh, this uh, blue dash, that line is the, the uh, kernel method based on uh, 
the uncontaminated data, but here I just uh, somehow I just uh, delete the error. Uh, I want to mention that uh, there are maybe some other uh, finite dimensional approximation like other polynomial or other approximation which also uh, probability models can be used. Maybe uh, it's maybe uh, worth investigating right, to deal with uh, some more case, but uh, uh, this is uh, what I have. Thank you for, uh, I didn't. Uh, Uh, any any question? Any data with uh, say that's a, that's a, the last application with uh, the contaminated data, like uh, you see micro data, uh, that's in biostatistics and the medical research. That's uh, the observation are really uh, really noisy. Right? That's uh, another right. But I, I believe in in the economic area, you have the data also contaminated. So you, you, you are not sure they are the true value. <laughs> when people collect the data, the, some people lie. <laughs> and they tell the numbers, the either bigger or the smaller, right? That's a common problem. Right? So I believe this. Uh, but uh, whenever you, you, you want to estimate uh, uh, like a density or a distribution function, right? Uh, using non-parametric method, if you are not willing to assume a parametric model, right? but sometimes you, ha you, you cannot find a proper parametric model, you have to use non-parametric me method. And then in that case, this is the, the method you can apply. So your method could be well uh, implemented in estimating a lot of big blood pressure, blood, uh, what was that, the cholesterol levels? Yeah, that's, um, yes, that is, we just deal with data. Right? We don't care what the data means. If it, is, uh, it is contaminated, we use uh, the, the deconvolution method, right? If uh, it is uh, just uh, say raw data, it's uh, pure, then we just uh, estimate density, right? If you, you can estimate density, then you, you know the population. Right? You, you can solve all the problems. Right? What about stock market index? Uh, yeah, I think the stock, stock pri pricing or uh, options, they, they're all uh, contaminated. You, 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 uh, it's hard. Although there are uh, theoretical models that, like black shoes or something, that's, there's still many uh, variations. Right? You, you, can, you still consider uh, semi parametric model or even non parametric model to deal with this. Right? That, that's, but uh, here I just do non parametric Thank you.